Hey guys, I'm back with episode two of playthrough with the designer. Today we've got a special treat. Uh, we're gonna be playing Mad F's newest course. Is it Digos or Digos? Uh, Digos. Digos. Digos is um, a course that. Well, I'm gonna let Matt explain it because I'm not sure I can do it justice. All right. Well, it's uh, it's it's designed from the ground up for Plat, so it's. We're throwing all of the rules of, like, good golf architecture out the window and just making things as silly as we can. Okay. And so, that version's designed from the middle tees. And then I just figured, well, we're going to tack on an extra one on the back that's even dumber than those. All right, so The let's... middle tees are very hard, but playable in tournament settings. The back tees are, yeah, just under 8,400, and it's... It's kind of the okay. Let's let's make this shot borderline, and then we'll just add fifty yards to it, and that's the, the those are the back tees. Okay. So this this should be fun. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I saw that you had released this, I was like, I'm playing it one way or the other. And then when J Ray gave me the idea of this um, of this series, I was like, this is perfect. This can't be any more perfect. Um, thanks. Um, hi, by the way. Thank for thank you for being on here. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me. All right. Um, I think most people who are watching this know who you are, but for those who don't, this what what team? Blue? Blue team. Okay, so Matt is the blue team captain for Dream Team. Uh, results of that should be coming out relatively soon. Um, by the time this has been published, actually, it might be really soon after that. Um, also, I mean, Matt's a, a two, are you are your next maker? Uh, correct. So Matt's one of the 2K Next makers. He's had um, myriad courses added to the game as official courses, and he's part of the um, course creator um, design, course design creation, whatever that series is you guys are doing. Yeah, so uh, the community project thing. Yeah, so Matt's very clearly an established um, and experienced and well-regarded designer. So I'm curious to see what he's done here with a an interesting idea that then has just been injected with steroids. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see what we got. Uh, I, I'm liking the tree in my way, right, to start things out. Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of those. I, I didn't end up going as into that idea as I originally intended, where I figured, oh, I want to make all of the holes uh, extra long and then really pinch a lot of the playing corridors to really limit your... Uh, your options just to again make it as obnoxious as possible so but. we're pl we're playing full full on us open golf here you have one option yeah okay. exactly perfect um as always and bonker that being said it's you know we start you out on a 500 yard par 4 and you're still hitting a flip 9 iron into it so yeah and then yeah we, Matt and I talked a little bit about this before we started there is a bit of sticker shock with the yardage um, the ball gets hit so far in this game that it might not actually end up playing what it says, but we'll see. Yeah, um, plus I think everything's fast and firm. I was debating making the fairway slow, oh, just geez. to add, uh, you know, just so that it plays more of its length. But yeah, um, if you do that, then you're never gonna have the ball rolling through the fairway either. Right. So you kind of like you kind of limit any sort of challenge with. Uh, like angles off the tee, that sort of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, you're, you're trading a tougher approach shot for easier drives. And I just figured, especially with uh, after Q's feedback, because I brought him in the loop on this a couple times, just to make sure that, hey, you know, I'm designing this custom for Platt, so you guys can give me feedback on what exactly you're looking for, so that I, you know, or we know that I'm making something that's usable and kind of in that threshold of what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, this screen's nice and flat. Yes. Uh, and I did I should, spot... I should also give a shout out. Uh, Dario helped me with, uh, um, a number of the, the holes on this one. So, originally, this was gonna be a full collab between the two of us. Okay. I was going to just sketch out the rough ideas, and then he would build, like, the, you know, you'd take a rough concept, build the final golf hole. And then I would go in and plant it afterwards. So a number of these are are just straight up, uh, uh, like I just sketched out a rough concept, and then Dario built the the golf hole on it. Okay, so but, this but is... he got busy and yeah. that kind of stalled out. So 
I think he did about five or six holes that way, and then I just did the rest of them trying to copy his style as best I could. I picked the right pin here, my goodness. Yeah, um, that one, that one, there's a couple that are just comical, and that's one of them. I love that pin. Um, and for those who don't know, Dario is CSU golfer something in the, um, in, in the forums, TGC Tours forums. Hmm. He's also a real professional golfer. Um, yep. So he knows how to play golf. All right, well, I'm going to try and cut this thing in here. It's still too it's, much. It's a good play. But again, it's also one of those where... Yeah, there's there's the sticker shock of the pin, but usually the play is just a like you can miss long pretty easily, and it's a standard par with maybe a lucky birdie. See, I'm not loving this though. Yeah, Ad admittedly, I'm used to just hitting it to the back edge of the green on this pin. I think you ended up uh, you got a big shot, and it's a little a little trickier than kind of the standard approach to this pin. Cause yeah, I'm in the rough, but I'm I'm on a downslope, so I don't know how fast this is coming out of here. Yeah, this might be this might get a little dicey, or it'll just be perfect. No, no, it's no, nope. yeah, no, okay, it's it, a little dicey. <laughs> um, the being downwind actually hurt me here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, this this is one where yeah you really want to be into the wind to get it to land as soft as you could. All right, well, we're over par already. <laughs> tin, tin tick on. Believe it or not, there are birdie opportunities out here, so it's not it's. I, we're not gonna hit you over the head nonstop. There's a couple breaks in there. So one thing I will say is the framing isn't what I'm used to from you. Um, it's a little bit. What is it? It's. Is it there's more water than I normally see in your courses? Is that what it is? There's something. Maybe. I'll get there. No worries. Admittedly, it's not it's not a very good um or it's not like a what's the word I'm looking for? Maybe not as refined as you normally do? Is that No, I'm I wouldn't say that. I just meant as in it's sort of inspired by uh uh sawgrass, but it oh, doesn't okay. Like, only very loosely. Because I kind of see a bit of Doral in it, too, if I'm honest. With yeah, all the water it's... Everywhere. I get... T yeah, this this feels very TPC course, in my opinion. Yeah. Which makes sense, given what you were going for. Yeah, it's... it's Yeah, it's the... We're just going to make... Yeah, lots of long whoa, holes whoa, whoa, that... Whoa, 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 whoa. Slope around water and stuff like that. What are we calling this? The little hummock, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's some that's some sculpting. Oh, that was that was the other thing is that you know you want to use all the all the tricks in your arsenal to 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 add to the difficulty, and okay. one of them is try not to give the uh, give players a, a flat lie. Okay, well, because the, the the plant guys are really good at doing math. Yeah, and one of the things that tends to throw them off is when they have to start compensating for a side hill lie. Especially now that you can't see how much of a side hill, because I imagine before they used to be able to look at the beads and go, okay, well, it's this mm -hmm. many, uh, you can't do that now, so, which is good. Yes. But, and then naturally I ended up building a, a course with little elevation change, which, you know, makes yeah. the, you know, I, I probably should have thought that out more when I was in the planning stages of it, but I think I did an okay job of. They can handle elevation. Um, I like this green. I, I like the way you've created it, the, the angle of it, and then with those massive slopes. Um, it's mm -hmm. basically like a reverse Rodan, but a really skinny one. Mm -hmm. That's uh, for, and Yeah, for this, because you're going to be tossing a, a sandwich in most of the time if you can hit yeah. the fairway, right? Yeah, I think this one's like 600 and change from the back, so it was always designed as a three-shot hole. So, yep. you know, again, it's the three-shot par fives really are just... Um, you just design them like short threes, mm -hmm. where the wedges or the green is designed for a wedge, and the way you make it interesting is you have to hit an aggressive second shot to shorten the length of your, you know, essentially your your par three. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I played a beta of this. Oh, did you? Yeah, or I played a bit of some. I don't know if I played the whole thing, but this I remember this hole. And I remember nice. you talking about it was something you were doing with Dario. I think it was at the time when you guys were, it was going to be a collab. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I remember playing this hole. 
and you were talking about me. It was something with this water you were thinking about doing a little differently. I have no recollection of this, but that's fine. <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm the old one. It's weird that I'm remembering. Ah, no worries. Yeah, it was something, I, I don't remember what you wanted. I don't know if you changed it much either, but there was something about that water. But yeah, you were talking about wanting to just make it completely obnoxious. This hole obnoxious. is almost 100% Dario. He, he built this one, and I, I basically just left it as it. Like, nope, this is pretty spot on. I, I, I didn't touch it. But I mean, going back to what you said on the first hole, here's another 500 plus par 4, and I just hit 7 iron into it. Yeah. So... Yeah, if you're not hitting any of the pins that are really tucked, either like the right or left ones behind that bunker or the water respectively, yeah. then like this this approach shot's really not that hard. You had a pin like right here, didn't you? Or do you don't you? Isn't there one like right in that neighborhood? So I can't see your, your mouse. Oh you can't so that. front right just just over the water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, there's definitely a pin there. Okay. I can't remember which one it is, but there's a pin. Yeah, I mean it'd be criminal not to put one there, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. So there's no flat putts out here either, it doesn't look like. No. Yeah, I tried to make sure that... Um, they're, they're, some are meaner than others, but... I, you know, where normally I avoid pins on kind of yellow slopes, uh, this time around we wanted to make sure we almost exclusively have pins on yellow slopes. <laughs> so what do you expect the reaction to be when this hits flat? Um, it really depends on what the, um, the settings are. True. Oh, this one's fun. You'll get a kick out of this one. Oh my god. Th this is, this is the silliest tee on the entire course. Do, do me a quick favor and check out the, the overhead of this one. Because I moved, I put a tee box on the other side of the, the fairway of the adjacent hole. Okay, hang on. Where this are... is designed as about 180, 190 yard, I think. Par, par three, and then I just added a pin that's uh, almost 100 yards longer than Yeah, when you look at from the overhead, there is no way you would ever see it going from here to here. Yeah. Because you've got that. Like, this is where the normal tee is, right? Oh, you can't uh, see that. By the, by the um, tournament objects there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah, this, this, I mean, down there does it's not... It's like three from the normal tees, and then it's comical from the back tees. Yeah, this or is... basically you have to hit a... Oh, and pin two is the fun one. The front pin on this hole is so much fun. It's and is, so dumb. Is this like a green sod farm or something? Like... No, no, that's the eighth hole. That's a fairway for the eighth hole. Oh. <laughs> so okay. yeah, you, you're on the other <laughs> side of the fairway from an adjacent hole. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, geez, you were saying a partial driver too. Yeah, tucked you were saying it was going to be part. I'd had to work on my partial drivers. Oh, goodness. yeah. This this is the one. This one's the funniest shot on the course. Uh, I hit it how I wanted to. The person who's birdied this hole from the back tees. Oh no! And Reed said he he sunk like a thirty footer. Well, if I do it, I'm going to be holing out a pitch. Or a splash. I've never birdied this hole in any of my playtesting, and I've playtested it a lot of times. Yeah, easy the thing is, like even like even for average players, you laugh at dumb this, and it's still a pretty standard par. Like I rarely bogey this hole. I mean, you could in theory just dump it onto that fairway apron and then chip it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or or you just. Yeah, you hit your partial driver to the back, and it's a long putt or just an easy chip to wherever the pin happens to be. Yeah, I mean, what I'm seeing with sculpting and, and green shaping and whatever, it's 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 mm -hmm. it's just a little bit more extreme than what you normally do, which yeah, which you, which is on purpose. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's silly, mm -hmm. and the like the shot values are are yeah very extreme. But in terms of hazards, you know, there's yeah, there's a lot of water on the course, but almost always just on one side. So if you play conservative, you can generally make pretty easy pars all the way through. So, I mean, I, I like, I mean, we played, I played Ben's course. Um, he had a course out recently that was really difficult too. Yeah, um, we had the same idea and kind of independently at the same time. I think we compared a little bit of notes, but for the most part, they're made completely independently. But and I just... Love how we came up with two completely different concepts with, you know, the same goal in mind.
Yeah, and what I what I enjoyed about his and what I'm enjoying about this is you had to like you had to figure out where's my miss. Yeah. Right. It wasn't just pin, pin hunting all the time and shoot mm -hmm. you know fourteen under or something. It yeah, was. Or... Yeah, it, you, you had you had to go. Okay, so here's the shot, but where where can I not miss this? Um, which is where I am right now. I you I couldn't miss it here. Yeah. This I don't. Eh, know. There's worse spots. I'd rather have the long putt than be short sided. I guess short side's not that bad. I'm just seeing that I have to come back downhill after if I get up the slope. Yeah, that putt was tough. Huh. All right. And now I've got a downhill putt. Beautiful. But I mean, the problem started when I hit my drive in the bunker. There it is. Standard par. Yeah. <laughs> For me, that's, I mean, play the hole completely incorrectly, make par. Mm -hmm. Pretty normal stuff around here. You've seen me play enough. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, this one's fun. Uphill Just too. a casual 530 yard par <laughs> four, 35 feet uphill. And into the wind a little bit. Yep. Yeah. So kind you, of a uh, sorry, go ahead. I was just say the other thing that's making me think Doral is all the skyscrapers and stuff, but kind of that Miami, right? Yeah, it does have kind of a Miami vibe to it. Uh this doesn't get there. Th uh, you know what? I think I just dumped this short. Yeah, sh short's a good miss. Oh, what was I saying? Oh, um, sort of an unintended consequence of me just designing the course for the middle tees and then just coming up with a set where we just bump it back for fun uh -huh. is the fact that I think from the back tees, uh, this course is easier off the tee than it is from the normal tournament tees. Because obviously I dump a bunch of hazards right around 295 from, right. the, from the middle tees because everyone on plat's going to be playing that distance and you know that's that's where you want to put your challenges so when you move it back then uh you're playing into all the like short layup areas that i that i you know created around where it's like oh yeah this it doesn't matter if the fairways because no plat player is ever going to lay up ever mm -hmm. like, even if they should even if you design a hole around correct play i just i think that there's just that mentality of consider yeah they're they're trying to birdie everything so the idea of laying up mm -hmm. is just not okay yeah. so here's just kind of a fun way to toy with yeah. flat players yeah. i think a little bit is just like look like the way to birdie this is to lay up or mm -hmm. i will like hey you can hit driver and it will always always end up in the heavy rough and so they'll still like refuse to lay up I'm, yeah, I, I completely agree. Sorry, I'm just looking at this routing masterpiece mm -hmm. here. Yeah. <laughs> where you've got the par 3T and now we're hitting that, mm -hmm. now we're on that fairway. Unfortunately, that's the only, uh, that's the silliest one on the course. There's no, there's no gems like that on the back nine. Ah. I wanted to put more and just the routing did not suit anything that crazy. Yeah, it would have been cool, like, if there was one, like, across the street or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that... we did that on uh, Shoreditch Links. We had one where there's a road adjacent to the, um, the plot, oh, yeah. and yeah. there's one tee that's just on the other side of the road. Yeah, that, that sounds familiar. Nice, nice deep green here. I think St. Andrew, or, like, I think, if I remember correctly, St. Andrews has to do something like yeah with the, for the Open Championship. Yeah, there's a... There's, there's a tee that's OB. Yep. It's not on the property. Yeah, one of the par fours, they had to push it back in order for it to play how they wanted it to. Mm -hmm. And we know that Augusta's thinking about doing that on 13. Yeah. Which, yeah, don't get me started. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's an equipment problem. Well, and it, it, for me, if they move the tee back, I think you lose everything that's great about that tee shot. Because mm -hmm. you'll just hit it straight to the end of the fairway and then... Right now, where you now you try and curve it around there. So, um, I that's why that's why I don't want them to lengthen it. I think they'll lose what's great about the tee. Oh, yeah, it's, it, it's just hard to replicate the the shot value without moving something. And yeah. even then, I think you still lose something. Yep. It's just when you know, even if you make the shot three hundred yards as opposed to two sixty or whatever it was intended to be originally, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't it's never gonna quite translate. No. 
No, it's not. And and then you're using a ball that flies completely differently. Um, yeah. You're using. Like, I mean, yes, I I grew up playing. I I played with persimmon woods and I played with a lot of golf balls, and it's mm-hmm. night and day. Um, a lot of ball launched super low, spun like crazy, and then it would kind of rise up, hit its apex, and then come straight down. Mm-hmm. Whereas the modern um, solid core ball launches high, and instead of it, it's it's more of like a a, a pretty consistent ellipse. Like mm-hmm. uh, it's flight. I would say it at a high like- level, like th- these guys' trajectory is almost laser straight. Like it goes yeah. up in almost a straight line until it runs out of spin and velocity, and it just kind of falls out of the sky and lands soft. But it it fall like if you think of a driver, like the ball now lands at a much shallower angle than a blotta ball used to. A blotta ball used <laughs> to climb and then just basically almost fall straight down. Yeah, well, that's that's how most that's how most clubs play. I think for at at a professional level. Uh. It's, Oh, well, in terms of you know, it, it climbs pretty straight and until it just falls straight down. Yeah, but the ball it doesn't balloon as much as the ballata. But no, honestly, I'm even if we went back to a ballata, I don't think we'd ever see that ball flight anymore because we're in that analytic era where you mm. know it's like oh that's that's not optimal. If if your ball's yeah. ballooning like that, then you're losing efficiency. Th- and then they would just be adjusting your equipment to drop spin off of it until you until it stops ballooning like that. Thing is, we knew that, and we couldn't do anything about it because the ball just you. The harder you hit that thing, the more it spins. Yeah, I mean, we live so, in an era where ah. like everything is purely built around removing as much spin as possible. For, yeah, for the longer clubs, absolutely. Um, yeah. And it, so, and the big you know, the big thing was. Because, I mean, when I was a kid, your choice was you either had a ball that was rock hard, a two-piece ball, mm-hmm. that, you, that would go the legal distance but wouldn't stop ever. Mm-hmm. Or you had a soft ball that didn't really go very far, but you could control it around the greens. Mm-hmm. Now you can have a firm ball that, I mean, you can basically have whatever you want. It'll, yeah. th- there'll be an option for you out there. I, and I prefer a ball to be softer because I grew up with Blada, right? So that's what I mm-hmm. kind of... That's how we used to determine if a ball was good or not. Yeah. If it was soft, we'd be like, okay, well, this is probably a good ball then. Now, you can have whatever you want. Oh, there it is. That looks good. Yeah, this... Oh. And then I did notice out in the fairway there again. I'm in the middle of the fairway, and I have balls below my feet. Um, mm-hmm. This would be terrifying to play in real life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is... God. Normally, I... That's a consideration. This is... Like, if I was going to play this in real if if, there, if I was an average golfer, is this something that's remotely doable? Yeah, this would be terrifying. And, and we just threw that out the window because you know it has to be silly. It has to be nonsensical in order for plat. Hey, nice. Is that first birdie? No, second. Oh no, two in a row. There you go. Yeah, I birded a par five. See, we were talking about Bellotta too much. I wasn't paying yeah. attention to the score. I've got one in my shag bag in the closet. A Bellotta ball. My old. Uh, Maxfly HT. That's what I used to play. Nice. When I was yeah, playing unfortunately, I was uh, I'm too young to have ever played with uh, with balladas, uh, other than like occasionally finding one in the woods that's been there for ten years. Yeah, they were. They. I mean, when I was in college, it was um, Rexstar, which was made by Bridgestone. Mm. Oh my goodness, those things were marshmallows. That's awesome. I I've. I think the funniest thing I've ever seen, well, not, but one of the funniest things I've ever seen on a golf course was I hit a putt with a blada ball and the thing wobbled to the hole because it was egg-shaped. <laughs> Things that don't happen anymore. Yeah, I was going to say, I knew balls would go out of round with balladas. Yep. That's, yeah, it's not something that anyone ever has about anymore. No. No, you, the ball would literally... People used to have these rings on their golf bag that were the... With the the diameter of a ball. Yeah, so if it was slightly off, it wouldn't fit anymore. Yep. Tell. Yeah, that's how they could tell sometimes. And, I mean, if you got more than nine holes out of a bladder, you were doing great. Mm-hmm. Those things did not. So, that was the biggest thing with the solid core balls. Mm-hmm. They they took a beating, finally. Yeah. Anyways. Um, sorry, go ahead. This will sound like a brag, but I've, like, I've had a couple... 
Like, I've played with golf balls for, like, 60, 70 holes before. Yeah. And, you know, and, like, they're completely fine. Yep. Now, admittedly, I'm not, like, a power player. I kind of, like, you know, I'll bat it around a little bit. So, you know, it's not like I'm truly punishing them, but, like, they're very durable. They're, they're yeah. You know, there is there is some perks to, to technological advancement. That's the biggest one for me, was that the ball now, you can pay basically the same as what we paid for Blada's, and the ball will actually last. Yeah. Uh, this wasn't played particularly well so far. A very non-plat shot off the tee, yeah. but there's going to be a lot of this kind of scrambling for par, you would imagine. Yeah. And time. Yeah, that's the thing. I think, as you said earlier, there's a ton of sticker shock with the with the yardage but mm -hmm. other than you know like yeah you've made one bogey and yeah, it, yeah. it's not gonna beat you up nearly as much as you think it's going to it's just also really not gonna close to a lot of pins it's i think what'll happen is if you try to if if you try to over well not overpower you're not overpowering it but if, if you try to get too aggressive it's gonna kick you in the teeth yeah if you accept that sometimes you're just going to make par and you're just going to, you know, instead of trying to hit that partial three wood to like within 10 feet or something, if you just go, you know what, I'm just going to dump this in front of the green and make my par and get out of here. Yeah. You'll probably. Yeah, this course will give you a really easy pars. And yeah. That's, yeah. So yeah, if you go in fearing that this thing's going to, you know, beat you up too much. It's, you know, you'll probably play it and be pleasantly surprised of, oh, well, that wasn't that bad at all. Because it's, yeah. you know, there's... There's places to miss. Sorry, what was that? I said there's places to miss. Yeah, and and yeah and, unless you're, you know, like the hazards are usually on the aggressive line. So if you just play away from it, there's not, you know, there's nothing really Whoa. to get in your way too much. Yeah, it's... um. Like, yeah, with entirely... Ben's course, there's a couple holes where... I remember that I had the short par 3 I maxed out when I played it uh, after he published. You know, there's no 12s lurking out here. Like, I don't I don't know if I've ever doubled a hole in playtesting on this course. Like, it's easy to make a bogey. Like, you miss the fairway and yeah. you miss a putt and that's bogey, but... So, hang um, on, hang on. We need a chat here. We have a drivable four, I know. I told you there's birdie opportunities but out here. It's an 8,400-yard course, and there's a drivable four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because every other par four is 510 yards. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's the ground doing? Okay, I see it. Well, Ultimately, but... I think this, this is one where um, the actual tournament tees, I think, are more fun. It plays to, like, 280, 290. So you gotta get so creative. So driver carries to the green, and you're, like, trying to hit, like, a 95% driver on that front edge type thing. Yeah. That Whereas was... it's less drivable from these back tees. Well, and the way the land was there, too, I knew I was getting kicked over here. Mm -hmm. I was torn, but it's also hard to... You know, to say, haha, I'm making a completely silly, nonsensical set of tees for this course and 290 yard drivable four. Like, yeah, I have to yeah. add just a little yardage to this. Yeah, you do. I, I think it's fine. I mean, it, and again, it might actually be, in a weird sense, easier from the back because you can't get in, you can't reach the treble, right? Exactly. You, you know, it's the, your second shots are going to be hard, but yeah, off the tee, it's easier. I'm not gonna do the car path. <laughs> no, it's it's. I don't. I don't think you'd get a bounce on. To no, it's, it's uphill and it's you know a long ways. I mean, it's gonna be a long friggin' ways going this way though. Holy smokes! With the way the wind is. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not that bad. Yeah, exactly. It's it. <laughs> it looks intimidating and not as bad as you think it's gonna be. No, it's not that bad at all. Like, it's still hard. I still think I'm, like, it's not quite as hard as I was intending to build it, but it's in a good spot. You know, the thing is, though, to make it really, like, brutally difficult, you almost have to be quirky. And yeah, this is just difficult hole after difficult hole, but you can still play them. Mm -hmm. There's, they're not quirked up, other than they've had a whole bunch of yardage added to them. Yeah. Uh -oh. The scary part is if you play from the front tees, 
Like, obviously, I'd probably have to bump the speeds down, but you could almost play this on CC on the front tees. Well, that's cool, though, that you can have that variety. Damn. Mm -hmm. There's a bogey. Yeah, well. Hey, you're still two under. Yeah. You, you had almost, you know, you had made two sets of back-to-back -back birdies, so. Oh, that's true. I had to get a, oh, and this one's very gettable, too. How many friggin' times am I getting them into the wind, though? Oh, that's true, yeah. You should still be able to reach in two. I made this one really short. This is the only par five on the course that's designed around being able to hit in two. Well, let's see what I've got. 260-ish. Oh, eh, man. Yeah, not with uh... his wind. No, dry, I mean, three wood doesn't carry. Ne no, neither just yeah. driver. Let's just have the most exciting shot in golf here. Eight iron layup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the purest shot in golf. And then yeah, you'll, you'll never hit a club as well as a seven iron layup. No, never. It's always the best strike you ever have in your life. Because mm -hmm. it's the one that matters the least. Exactly. Okay, uh, you're still messing with me with the undulation there, too. I had to try to figure out which was going to take more, the, the wind or the, the ground. Yeah. Oh, no, it stayed up there. Okay. It's not, it's not as extreme as it could be, but the goal was still definitely, like, no flat line. It should pull a little bit one at all times. Oh, you bugger. Oh, that was so close. I thought that was in. I think Ben won in terms of our, our... Well, not really a competition, but just... You know, this one's difficult, but it's pretty straightforward, and his is a monster. Well, I, mean, I, mean, I think it's funny. His is barely 7,000 yards, and it's yeah. significantly harder than this one. What did I shoot on his? I don't remember now. Um... But I don't remember, like, I remember kind of feeling the same way about it, was it wasn't crazy difficult, it was just you had to play smart. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a couple holes out there where it's, the, the short three, I cannot remember which hole it is, but that one in particular drove me nuts. Huh. Like, this, I, th I think I plunked four in the water, I could not hit the shot in whatever wind conditions I had. Th this is just TPC on steroids, is what it feels like. Yeah. Because again, I think, I think you hit like a seven iron into this green. It's, it's you know about one seventy ish. Oh, oh there's I, a that's a shot. I hit four iron because I had the wind into me, but yeah. But so I did chuckle at the idea of oh, I'm gonna build an island type par three, and I'm just gonna make it. Into it. Jeez. Uh, and then of course we finish with oh, look at this for camber. And the wind's going. Mm -hmm. I mean. In some ways, this is the worst wind direction you can get. Yeah. It's, um, you it's have just to almost try strong. to fade it into the, the wind a little bit. Oh, I meant for the entire round. Every par five was into the wind, it felt like. Oh, that's true. We might have to take notes then, figure out which direction this was, so that we can use it for the tournament. Yeah. Um, now, I'm sure there were some par fours that I got with the wind that, that helped. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that for a ridge, too. Oh, yeah. The funny part is, uh, you know, I originally intended the back tees to be a, just like a joke, essentially. Yeah. Um, and, you know, after Maddie and Q played them, uh, I think they're going to use them for at least one round in the actual tournament. That's so, funny. I mean, in some ways, my, my CC tendencies kind of poked out. And even when I'm trying to build a course, it's still playable. Yeah. A little unintentional blindness there back in the fairway. Eh. Eh. It's again. It's when you're when you need to make every lie on. Yep. This is not a kind of course you would just. It got it just the land called for it. This the bulldozer yeah. was used significantly. It's, yeah, it's totally manufactured. But that was the whole idea. So. Yeah, it was. I wanted to do something different as a side project. Yeah. It's like I've never designed like a comical. Uh, like very hard golf course before so that was that was just the challenge here of hey how hard can i build a golf course and have it remotely work yeah well i mean again it's playable it's yeah um 
How long did this take you versus what a normal course would have taken you? Um, this was on the shorter end because, I mean, the concept's pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, planting is what tends to take the most time on a course. Yep. Um, and half the planting area is just water. And then what I did plant is pretty simple. Like, it's just, it's coffee-paste uh, trees, and then you just bury a couple bushes, and that's about it. Yeah, I mean, it, um, it, it feels like you spent more time on the, the actual hole designs and making them, like, crazy difficult than maybe the environment? Yeah. Okay. I think that and, um, you that... know, again, because I had help, uh, Frederick helped with a little bit of the, the background city and the clubhouse and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And Dario helped some of the golf holes, so I think that, you know, I probably only had about two thirds the work I would have on a solo course. Yeah, and I think when I said at the beginning the environment looked a little different than what I normally see from you, that'll be why you had a, partly because you had other guys involved. Um, to be fair, I, I uh, in terms of the environment, I you know I, I did the direction for it and that sort yeah. of thing. It's just it's just not quite normally you, um, and I think. But I think part of the other reason is because you really focused on making the holes difficult, and so then that created sculpting choices you normally wouldn't have made, and um, oh, yeah. you normally wouldn't have a T going across another fairway. <laughs> Wait, but that, you know, because it's a silly idea. Yeah, exactly. Just came around. It's I I I found that kind of randomly and went. That's really. Dumb. And I think the other it's thing, perfect. Yeah, I think the other thing is you're not somebody who typically would do a TPC style of course. I don't think you really like them that much, do you? Not particularly. Yeah. So that's the other thing is that it's I'm just not used to seeing this style from you. That's all it was. Yeah. It, yeah. It's it works. Something it's fine. It's always good. Yeah. No, I I had fun with that. That was good. Um, if I had played any better, I might have actually shot a, a good score. But there's, I, yeah. you know what? I, it, this is a course that when they play it on platinum. The scores mm -hmm. aren't going to be as crazy high as people think they are. But they'll, they'll score no. out here. I don't know if we're going to see minus 15s on this, I'm sure. It's yep. just the, uh, um, you know, it's it's the shot values will be different. It's not going to like punish plat players, but it should challenge them, I think, a little bit. I hope or, so. Not enough to bump the scores down, but it's it at least plays kind of on their, their playing on yeah. their level, I think. Yeah. Okay, I got two questions for you to finish off here. This is the yes. same two. Question one, what's your favorite thing about this course, about how you designed it? Uh, the back tee on number five. <laughs> okay. The, the, the dumbest thing I did on the course is... Is your favorite? Yes. Okay. And is there anything you would change if you had another crack at this? Um, like, I, I think I did an okay job of... Um, copying Dario's style. And he was the first one to really put in a golf hole on, on the course. And okay. therefore um so he did the first um I wanna say it was one through five and ten, I think, were the ones he did. Um and so I was just trying to copy essentially it was the okay, well he's not gonna have time to finish it up, but you know, what we have here is good enough. You know, it's the, like, this should be finished, and I can go ahead and, like, I, I should be able to copy its style. It's it's not as it's not as close as I would like. I, I definitely struggled in areas. Okay. And I'll probably be the only one who really notices, where like, yeah. I'll notice areas of, oh, I didn't do a very good job here, and I didn't do a very good job here, or there, but... Yeah, yeah as long as it's mostly cohesive. Yeah. And... Nope. I think and most... I probably have made it harder if that you know if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I th I I did. It does. It, it. I think there's a lot of there's just a lot of safe areas out there, and it. I never felt playing it like it was brutal. I just felt it felt long. Yeah. Um And I mean, the second hole, I guess I was kind of like, all right, what the hell do I do here? But yeah. But it. it there always felt like there was there was always a bail. Um. Like you said, par was always fairly easily attainable if, if that's what you were trying to do. Yeah. Um, I think the only way I mean, you're... It, by the end, that was the goal. It wasn't really the yeah. goal going in, but once I saw Ben's course, because I, I got to play test his when he was still designing it, 
Um, and that was the wake up call of I thought my course was hard, and then I played his and went, "Oh man, I'm not close." <laughs> you just don't have it in you, I don't think. No, it's it's yeah, it's it's not as natural to me as it is for him. Yeah. So I was feeling very satisfied with where I was at with this, going like, "This is perfect. This is really hard." And then I played his and went, "Nope, it's it's not there." But you know, we'll, we're we're just gonna commit to uh, uh, finishing up how you know it is what it is, and we'll just you know it. Course projects always evolve as you as you work on. Them. And yeah. it's essentially, what what this course was supposed to be kind of changed, and I just accepted like, okay, this isn't gonna be this isn't gonna be hard for Platt, but it's gonna be appropriate for Platt, and that, yeah. and I'm okay with that. Awesome. Um, well, we proved today that you can play an, an almost 8,400-yard golf course, and it's playable. Um, Matt, I can't thank you enough for being on this. No um, worries. Thanks for, thanks for having me. This yeah. was fun. No, I agree completely. It's, uh, again, thank you to J. Ray Gunn for the idea of doing this. Um, this will go out on Monday, so I don't know what will happen between now and then. I'm, for, for those watching, it's Tuesday today. This will be going out this coming Monday, so um, seven day, six days in advance. Thank you guys for watching. Um, please hit like and subscribe, first of all, to sh so, so that other people can see all the great courses that these guys create, and as well because it helps the channel. Um, I will have another episode coming soon. It will be Maddie from Canada is up next. Um, nice. And we're going to play Shoreditch Commons, and we're going to just tear it apart, apparently. Mm. But for now, I'm going to say cheers. Thanks, Matt. Yep, anytime.